Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's good. I mean, summer is here. Yep. And and we're getting into we're we're delving into June, which just means good things are coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a lot of good things coming this month. Uh, of course, uh, depending on your perspective. Uh, some people may think it's good, some people may not, but uh, Acolyte started this week, and uh, I know we're going to talk a little bit of Bear, but I've been, as with the uh, release of the, uh, I guess they had the premiere party of House of the Dragon earlier this week, and I was seeing all the photos on Twitter and, and whatnot, and I was just, I'm just getting so hyped, hyped, hyped about that show, and I know the boys dropped a clip today, but I haven't watched that, sh- I haven't watched the clip, because I, I just want to just go into that show with what are the greatness I remember from the third season and also the end of Gen V. So the end of Gen V, the complete story of Gen V. And it's just, yeah, yeah. I, I pay little attention to what the boys is happening because I know I'm going to watch it and I don't want anything spoiled, especially a four or five minute long action sequence. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Kicks off the first episode. Spoiler for later. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But next, yeah, next Thursday. So let's hear with the boys and Sunday for House of the Dragon. Yeah, I am so hyped. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And I don't know if we we stated this before on the show, but we're only talking about the first three episodes. So we're going to cover the the acolyte third episode next week. And then we are putting it on the shelf so that we can focus on House of Dragon and the boys. And then when those conclude, then we'll return and wrap up the Acolyte. Um, in some news, Giancarlo Esposito was officially announced to join the MCU as an unnamed villain. Of course, he's a villain. Yeah, <laughs> what? <of course>. what? <laughs> like, the poor guy. I, I really wish... Like, we would get him in a different role. I mean, Mm -hmm. he plays a great villain, but it's also to the point where I saw that headline and I thought to myself, wait a second, why did I get this, like, weird feeling that he had already been cast as a villain before? (laughs) (laughs) In the MCU. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's funny because he did tease it, uh, I guess, about a week or so ago. And then, yeah. I have picked up on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm saying like there's been so many MCU movies, it mm-hmm. is astonishing that it's gone this long for them not to have cast him. True, true. So yeah. and and he he's joining Captain America four, which okay, so Will help me mm-hmm. out here. What yep. what is the Captain America four saga? Because I feel as though filming has wrapped, filming has resumed. Filming mm-hmm. has wrapped, and now we are getting a casting annou- announcement. So, yeah. what what what's the truth? So, what is going on is yes, with in, in addition to Giancarlo being cast in the movie, uh, they are back in Atlanta doing reshoots okay. for the for and and so there was uh, for folks who um, are fine with spoilers and stuff. Uh, the, of course, there is a set photo of him in his costume on, on set. And um, so, yeah, this, I, I can't, I think it was a, a maybe 20 day reshoot. If I want to recall from the story from, um, uh, from the trades, uh, this was, yeah. Cause I remember posting on our socials, I bet it was like last week, uh, but that's what's going on with, with this, this movie. And uh, hopefully it'll finally get released some point next year. I think it's still, on track for a uh, twenty what on the twenty twenty five slate for for the MCU, but mm-hmm. uh, that is what's going on. Of course, the you know the movie did get a a title change as well. I can't remember. I don't want to. I think it's 
Brave New World, I think is yeah. the the tagline now. And um, yeah, and of course, everybody's wondering, speculating if, if he's going to be replacing Jonathan Mazur as Kang. Of course, I've been seeing a lot of Doctor Doom out there. And I think the Doom rumor is one that could work, especially if they introduce him here. Uh, and instead of waiting, you know, to, in, 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 as we know, the Fantastic Four is going to be filming later this year. And I think also Slate is going to be released uh, late 2025 or 2026. So that, that would be, you know, given how Marvel does their rollout of certain characters that that would be keeping with with some of the, the tradition of that franchise so we'll see yeah yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we shall see so who do you so people who don't want to know like resume in two minutes who do you, who do we suspect he's playing what role uh I've seen everything from well there's the wish list of Magneto or Professor X to uh, I've also seen Dr. Doom, which if they want to go, if, if that's the case, I mean, age wise, he's not too much older than Pedro Pascal. So that would track with uh, Reed and 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 uh, Doom being contemporaries of each other. Uh, I've also seen some other uh, uh, Kang, you know, obviously, given that Jonathan Majors has been uh, let go. Uh, so th- those are some of the ones I've seen, but I think uh, listeners, if you've heard other rumors or you, you want to toss your hat in the speculation ring, you know, feel free to you know, let us know. All right. Well, um, the last bit of news is that season two of Star Trek Prodigy is dropping on July 1st on Netflix. Will, have you talked to me about this show before? <laughs> I, I have. Uh, when it was Drop from the Paramount Plus streaming service. And that, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it was one of the animated shows on, on that streaming platform. It was, uh, it had just wrapped up its first season. People were very hyped with uh, with it going into a second season. And then there was a big story about all these various Star Trek things coming out, like the Section 31 movie. And a couple other things, but in that same, I want to say around that same time, they had announced that they were canceling this and there was a letter writing campaign and and the uh, showrunners were like, don't worry guys, we're working on something and and Netflix did pick it up. So uh, very excited about this this show. It's definitely, I I will say as far as some of the the new Trek uh, shows, I I, I really, really, really enjoy Star Trek Prodigy. I think it's um, definitely one of, one of my top ones or well, consistent i mean this first season was great that's good yeah. that's good well be on the lookout for that um and i hope that you you get ready because because will will definitely be on blurred talk about it yeah <laughs> uh, well yeah they're dropping all 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 episodes are going to drop on, on july 1 so July yeah, so, uh, so I, I I know what I'll be benching over that over the holiday weekend. <laughs> yeah, classic Netflix model. Which that's one like deterring about Netflix is that I still have yet to gauge an understanding of what their model is because some shows seem to drop all at once, and then some shows these days are dropping half now, half a month later, and it's just and then some like two episodes here like on a weekly basis. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> all right, so moving on, before we get into the Acolyte, Will has been catching up on The Bear Season 2. How many episodes have you watched of it? I've watched the first five of Season 2. So so half, because it's ten episodes, right? That is correct. That That is correct. Um, And what are some of your, like, standout episodes, moments, or overall thoughts about what you've seen so far? Overall, felt uh, this show is. I remember why I came to it late with season one, and but I remember really, really enjoying it. I, and I know it was your top show of last year, mm-hmm. and and um, you know, I didn't like last like the first season. I, I got back to I got around to it late, but yeah. it's so it's so enjoyable. i have just really it's a tr- it's just like the ideal like ensemble show i mean every every character has an arc you know carney of course uh is the lead 
uh, White, his character, obviously he's um, now they're in the process of renovating the beef into the fine dining restaurant and just all the, uh, you know, thinking about the first episode, some of the highlights from it, of course, is how the math just didn't add up <laughs> and, and just, you know, doing literally doing the back of the napkin instead of it was the back of the cardboard math as far as uh, trying to, uh, you know, figure out how to pay for it all. Then, of course, Uncle Jimmy, you know, Patton Oswalt just does a great job of that spark playing that character. And, uh, you know, so it was just, that you know that was a standout for that one. As far as some of the other you know the other four episodes, really just sort of seeing how you know the, the uh, I, I see where people were like questioning whether or not is this show a comedy or a drama because it 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 it, it plays both sides of of that fence depending on where they are in the ep- in, in the episode and stuff. And I guess it is a little bit more of a different tone. In the second season than the first, because of you know obviously in the first season it, it, it won a bunch of Emmys and stuff for uh, in, in the comedy category, but I feel like this season is, is a little bit it has its comedic moments, but it's definitely leaning more into the drama as far as the things that are going on with with building the renovated a restaurant. Of course, Sugar, uh, one of the highlights is for me has been you know, the uh, how dense the guys were, and even I uh, can't su- surprise Tina didn't pick it up either at first. Uh, Sugar is pregnant. Mm-hmm. And and, uh, and it just sort of, you know, whenever how that reveal did happen um, and, and how Richie was like, I called it. <laughs> just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, come on, Richie, really? Um, but also the whole dynamics with Richie and Fack and, you know, with the and, and, and uh, with the renovations and, and, of course, Marcus's story, you know, going to, to Denmark and. And that's the episode you left off on, right? The Denmark uh, episode. Uh, I um I actually I I just finished the last one uh, this week with uh, when Carney and and Claire at the party. Episode five. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was the fifth episode. Yeah, I think I just watched the fourth episode when I was talking to you about uh, Marcus's journey and you know and and learning from uh, Will Poulter's character, um, you know, doing the Danish pastries and. Uh, and, uh, you know, and just really enjoy seeing that process. And that's the other thing too, it's just like, you know, I live here in Durham and we have a lot of really cool, you know, it's a foodie, it's a foodie destination. And, and of course this is, you know, the show's based in Chicago. Um, and, you know, obviously another foodie destination, but, you know, just seeing that sort of the fine dining and stuff, Sydney is you know, and, and Carney were trying to work through recipes and, you know, trying to find, make pasta. I think that was the second or third episode and just trying to get that the, the right pasta and just, you know, the, the craft of 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 making good meals and that kind of stuff, too. I think that was something that really stuck out to me. And also mentioning Durham, the, the book that uh, Coach K had written, uh, you know, displays prominently in in the show. Uh, I know um, the. Uh, I think the showrunner had gotten it from from Coach K, and I actually happened to see an interview with him talking about uh, how Coach K, who's uh, Mike Krzyzewski, who's Duke University, former retired Duke basketball coach, um, was uh, you know a fan of the show and and how he got that and how they how they interwove that into into the show this year um, was was really 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 cool. So I'm I really like I said I'm really really enjoying enjoying this show. I mean we. Definitely could get into a lot more of the uh, highs for me, but uh, those are some of my quick overall thoughts of, of of the Bear season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I remember. I think the first thing I said about it after I watched it on on the podcast was that I was surprised by how they took everything I liked about season one and just amplified it in season two. So there, because season one, I was like, this is good. It it didn't blow me away, but you can tell while watching season two, especially the first half that, okay, they're, they had to set, like they had to, you had to, to understand the dynamics of the restaurant and also <laughs> inner, like you had to have a foundation, um, mm-hmm. And and now they are literally rebuilding. 
Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Rebuilding. And and yeah. I just, I, I don't know, there's a rhythm and a tone. And um, overall, I am still obsessed with this season of television. So I'll, I'll be curious next week when you finish it um, to really hear about what episodes stood out among the 10 and also just the moments because it I I go back and forth about the whole comedy and dramedy or drama debate and I I understand why people would raise an eyebrow to it but at the same time I I feel like there was something even more ridiculous that the Golden Globe stuck in the comedy oh it was that it was that movie with Julianne Moore and uh, oh, yeah. Natalie Portman. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. I heard the title. Yeah. Yeah, you watch five minutes of that and then think about any episode of The Bear. And yeah, The Bear is definitely a comedy in comparison to that movie. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's all like just just uh, relative. So, yeah. yeah. So, but it, I mean, I also think that arguably for a show to do well in the Emmys or the uh the Golden Globes I think people kind of stick things in the comedy because the drama is just so packed yeah, yeah it is <laughs> I, I mean your chances of winning in the drama category significantly lower than if you're just like yeah we made a few jokes so comedy <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure and, and, and the other thing about this series too and i think I, I mentioned it to you when i when i started it uh, a few weeks a couple weekends ago it's just uh, how bingeable it is i mean i could have easily have blown through like all 10 that when i when i was watching it um oh, i think yeah. memorial day memorial day weekend but i was like no 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 I, I, let me let me hold on to let me just save it until we're a little bit closer to our recording time so uh so it, i will have fresh and fresh impressions but but like you said i mean you, you know you watched it last year and it still you know beats and moments are memorable and that's really was well, what, what... like i also i watched it i think i then re immediately rewatched the season and then i went back and rewatched season one then i went like i have probably seen it and i've just started earlier today re-watching the first few episodes of season two um, I probably have seen it, seen season two, four to five times yeah. straight through over the course of the year. And granted, there was a few months and I didn't. Um, but a few weeks ago, I, I returned to season one mm -hmm. because I knew season three was coming. So I was going to watch this straight through. And I've now probably seen season one a good three to four times. <laughs> so because yeah. that's another thing it made me like when it was done, I was like, but I still want to be in this world. So yeah. I want I circled back and was like, let me revisit. And honestly, I think I think it made me appreciate season one more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because of now making more connections and and seeing bigger arcs over the course of season one and season two, like it made me appreciate a lot of that more um, than if I had never seen season two. So, so I'm I'm only curious about what season three, but but we shall see. We're we're not going to necessarily cover it on the show, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, because we got other things to do and. Um, this isn't really a geeky conversation. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but 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 we we all we we deviate for like excellent shows, and this is is definitely one. And um, and so you may you may see some some social posts about it from from us <laughs> whenever we do when we do watch it in uh into June in, into July. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, that brings us to the Acolyte Season 1, Episode 1, Lost and Found. The Jedi pursue a suspect after a shocking crime occurs. Basically, the entire tagline of this show that was sold to us yeah. is all in this one episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, my God. So what? So tell me what uh, you really feel. Yeah. <laughs> what I really feel is, oh my God, this is, this 
show makes me so mad. <laughs> mm, wow. Okay. Like, not incredibly mad, yeah. but, you know, about on the same level as Ant-Man 3. Ooh. I just, I really think the writing is atrocious. Mm -hmm. And I think it's atrocious, and it took me to episode two mm -hmm. to really, like, be able to articulate it. They keep asking a question and then immediately answering it. Mm -hmm. There's no mystery. I mean, the biggest mystery is who's May's master, right? Yeah. And yeah. and then, but but we also and we think, oh well, well May knows, and then <laughs> like May does now. Now, based on um, what Soul learns, May doesn't even know who her master is. So. I just, I'm like, so what is, are you going to explain that to us in that episode? So I just, I have a lot of issues with that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the writing makes me not like pretty much any of these characters, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. Soul. I have so really? many problems with Soul. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is great because, you know, that's contrary to, I think the prevailing view is, at least in, Discussions I've had. I mean, I was I was able to do a quick collaboration with uh, A plus. Thanks guys for for inviting me on to to talk about it last night. Um, I mean, and also just other other reviewers and shows that I've been you know, catching up watching. I mean, people. That's the one character everybody likes, Sissel. Uh, so you're the first person I've heard, I think, that uh, is, that's down on that. Uh, yeah, which, and they which, probably also like Star Wars in general. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, just, in general. But, I mean, I, I know Harloff is, like, not – he's kind of on the oh, fence yeah. with the show. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> that's – I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, just – it's not – not an adult show <laughs> yeah it's not it's well you know it's the um it's the ex i mean we you know there's the extremes there's i guess as far as grading the gradient of disney plus shows we have the um you know andor i guess is like the top and then there's like bubba fett <laughs> which i no, think universally no, don't, don't don't like flake on ahsoka boba fett was just boring yeah. It was just boring. Ahsoka was a show made for children. Ahsoka, like, yeah. yeah. Maybe had... maybe like teenagers, but it it definitely. And now, so far, this I would put on the, like, they sit at the same table. Okay. And that's, and that's fair. I mean, I think that's fair. I mean, why, my thought on the show is fine. I mean, I, I don't, I, it, it didn't blow me away. Which I guess, here's, here's my question. Yeah. Um, and I think this coincides with with the ending of the first episode. Um, why is the show called The Acolyte? So that's one of the mysteries of who is the who is the acolyte for, I assume the Sith. And well, but but the, the, ordered... the acolyte they refer to her. Well, I mean, I just yes. don't understand why they chose that term. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think as this as the series progresses, we will we will find out who that is, what who, who's the master and who and, and, and who she is the acolyte of, uh, because at this point, the you know obviously the, 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 the we just know that there is a force user that's out there. Uh, from Indira you know, carrying Moss's like you know two minutes of being being on in the show, um, but beyond that, uh, wait, 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 it, wait, what do you mean? May killed Indira. Yeah, but okay. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so we okay. From what I understand on the on at, from what I understand about the ending of this show, we we see in the distance the master. And he or she has has voiceover and is saying an acolyte kills without a weapon. An acolyte kills the dream. So yeah, totally Sith. But but we don't know who it is. But we also know May is walking towards them, and it kind of the way they said it, it phrases like she is the acolyte 
for them. And that's why she killed Indira at the beginning of the episode, as well as went on to kill another Jedi. She has four Jedi, four, four Jedi on the list. And then all circles back to May and May and um, Osha, who were young girls Mm -hmm. on a planet and their planet went like blew up. And then there's now over the course of the two episodes, there's a mystery about, about what happened and also why Indira soul, who was the other guy called Torben and, and and now the Jedi Wookiee master who will meet in the third episode, what, how they're connected to May and Osha and why, why May, like why these specific Jedi masters are on her list. Right. Um, I think I, I think I covered that. Yeah. 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 So, so like, and when I say mystery, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it drove me crazy because the, the, the first, I don't know, 20 to 40 minutes of this, this first episode, the mystery is, wait, wait, we're introduced to, to Osha and, but but we were just introduced to someone who looks exactly like her. So it was all about like, well, Osha's denying she killed Indira. Did she? And so there's a question and then they answer it. They answer it. Not even at the end of the episode. They answer it very early on that. No, no twin theory. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was, um, they telegraphed it from the from the get uh every, you know from the show itself to some of the promotional materials but um i yeah that see i didn't i didn't pay attention to the promotional materials and so i actually was like wait a second what why is she acting like they're doing a pretty good job like she had nothing to do with it and then they answered the question they stole my mystery and then they created another mystery like why are we only learning about the twin now and souls like no 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 may died may died and this is my problem with soul will this is my problem it all happened in the first episode he was so everyone else was like like even I feel I feel like what's his face? Um Yond Yord was Yord, like, yeah. Do you do you think it was a twin? He's like, No, May's dead. And yeah. then five minutes later he walks over to Osha. Osha's like, May's alive, and he's like, I believe you. Like, what what dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, believe me, me. I that that was and it, it that was the 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 logical inconsistencies and the and the this, and the and the plot conveniences that happened in this in the first oh. episode in particular so drove me drove me nuts. I mean, I completely agree. I thought the writing of the show is it was very like as I said the 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 the, the mystery. Well, not the, the the reveal of like we're trying to head fake the twin versus is it dual identity? Um, this is some, some sort of disorder or something like that. Trauma. I mean, yeah, it 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 failed because I was just like, and it, and this is before I, I mean, whenever she did the wake up on the ship right after that happened, I was like, oh, they telegraphed this. It's a twin. I mean, they did. Well, and, and, you're a lot smarter. <laughs> I mean, well, well, I was like, it, it's it's. It was, I mean, that's what they were trying to get at, but it was just sort of like. Uh, it, it, it just, it just didn't land. It, it, it carried it for a little bit, but then it was sort of like, whenever that York came to, to arrest her, it was sort of like, okay, that, that, that was quickly like blew the, the theory out of that, you know, the, the being in two places at once. Um, oh yeah, exactly. It blew like- it out. Of- it blew it out of the water. Yeah, it felt like they they were trying to set up a mystery, and then they just kept stepping on the mystery. So they had to rewrite. It was like they they wrote it out, and then they inadvertently solved it. And they're like, "Oh wait, now we need something more." Yeah. 
<laughs> like this isn't complete. But to go back to my soul thing, because you were you also mentioned how you were kind of like surprised by my whole soul take. But you can see now where my kind of like, huh, dude, I don't like yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that was that was a quibble for for me as well. That um, that I I mean, I, I, as far as like characters, I mean, uh, soul. I w May and Osha like were probably the ones that I, I most. I liked the most in, in, in the first two episodes, to be honest. Um, not that they were outstanding, blow me away. It was no. just, but it was just more. They they were they they were. Mandalog doesn't have the writing yeah. to support a stellar um as a stellar ex uh, performance. So she's doing what she does. But it's yeah. at like it's just to support the writing she's given. Like she's right. like, and there's nothing more I can do. I can just do what I can, and that's the appealing part of her. Yep, that's um, exactly what it I was. I do yeah. think Daphne Keen steals it a bit in the second episode because Jackie is just um, very see, cool, and I love her disdain for Yord. <laughs> yeah, well, see, honestly, those two. Uh, the, sh so, see, that was where I was sort of like. The other characters, I mean, she didn't pop for me as far as as far as her, her Padawan. I, I that so I was sort of like everybody's like raving about Daphne Keen, but I was just like, now which one was she? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I had IMDb up. Trust me, I would yeah. have not known that that was Daphne Keen. Yeah. Um, and and without having IMDb up that told me like oh that's his fighter <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> I, I like knew that during the first episode i'm like I don't, where's daphne keen and then the second one, i'm like i'm like staring at the makeup and i'm like yep yeah yep. i'm pretty sure that's her and yeah. it's not and i'm not saying like this is my favorite character i'm just saying out of all of them she's like the least that she i don't know that that has not fallen too flat um mm -hmm. And but but yeah, I mean, we, in a roundabout way, we are summing up the first episode because really it just goes from Indara's death to to a revelation about May and Osha being twins yeah. to to what then Soul believing that and then soul also believing not only that osha didn't kill kill uh indira but also that no 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 may still alive mm -hmm. and and then um we we get the whole an acolyte kills without a weapon an acolyte kills the dream yeah. which which the dream is peace like the the jedi way this is set a hundred years before empire and so this is in a peaceful time in the galaxy. How does the Sith and how does evil spark that leads to their downfall? Yeah, or at yeah. least harder lines to cross. So so I get that. And I mean they 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 do they do an okay job about retaining that method uh, message in the second episode because we learn that there's there's an exchange between May and um and one of her allies who who basically it's like she's on this mission to kill these these four Jedi masters, but mm -hmm. she needs to do one, at least one, so without a weapon yeah. um in order to please the master. Because until she does that, she technically is not an acolyte. But I guess I still want to understand who who decided to refer to this type of thing as an acolyte. I don't understand it. <laughs> well, I think that's where, and we'll probably get some answers to that over over the over the course of the series because, I mean, like as you as you noted, this is set 100 years before Phantom Menace, uh, so in the over at, at the end of the High Republic. Um, and you know, and, and and there was the line in Phantom Menace where you know, I think they're trying to like reconcile 
a bit of of canon here from that line and and phantom where it's like we haven't seen by that point they're they're, they're you know they used to word sith um and we haven't seen those in a millennia so i think what they're you know they're not uh, you know it's a clearly we know as far as viewers that when we saw that red lightsaber that's that's the sith dark side they're not calling it that obviously in this in in in, in this time period because it's just the, the, the there are four sensitive people out there and uh i think uh, you know and i think this is showing some of the fallibility of the jedi even at the height of their power uh that where things are are are, are stable things are peaceful and 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 so this under this this the, these dark forces are starting to starting to come to the to, to the forefront that was the the kill that she had to make to be to to to, to continue her path as an acolyte of I I like how we have spent so much time on one freaking line that yet there's not much else to talk about. <laughs> Because well, we can sum it up so easily about what actually happened in these two episodes. <laughs> that, well, yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, there's so many plot conveniences, like, you know, like the whole the Jedi putting her OSHA on the prison barge with a bunch of robots. I mean, if, if they suspect it, I mean, it's it's a pretty effing big deal if you if if you. If you murder a Jedi, I mean, this is not like this is an everyday occurrence, it seems uh even though they seem to be treated it as such <laughs> but uh the, so yeah it's just sort of like okay you, you got a jedi killer this doesn't happen at often but yeah we're just gonna like put you on a barge with a bunch of robots and you know take you back to coruscant yeah cool okay and then it just happens to like you know things happen conveniently and that's what i meant by like the plot convenience is that just really drove me that that did drive me crazy with that first episode yeah it's it's plot plot conveniences surrounded by or wrapped in just question answered question answer question answered and it's like where's the death where where's the thing that makes me want like to to watch the next episode yeah well for me yeah. Where's the curiosity about like what they're going to explore? Because yeah, sure. They could answer this whole acolyte mission mystery or whatever, but, but I also am just like, but at the end of the day, it's also not something I generally care about. Like go ahead and answer it. But I also don't care about the answer one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I do. It, it it did spark enough curiosity in me that I, I I do want to know what were what's so what was the, what soul was hiding and what these the, these four particular Jedi were doing on May and Osha's home planet that um, that has led to yeah so I mean the mystery here is why the dark side forces right. want to kill the you know, what's so special about these four Jedi that's the mystery well, it all goes that's, back to May and Osha's hometown and being burned home home right. planet fuck right. I, and, I actually hate talking about this show because apparently I can't talk during it <laughs> but it's but it all goes back to that and why why May is so adamant or not May Osha is so adamant that it was May who burned down the world. And then my theory is, well, May wants revenge on these four four Jedi because, because they set her up, or she thinks that they set her up mm-hmm. for that, or or maybe they think she thinks that they started it and it was an accident. It's gonna totally be explained. And it's going to be explained in the most convenient way. It's like, oh, I get why you would think that and that would happen. And then now you're both joined together. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But I mean, I get your point. Like, yeah, that that is one mystery that that you 
that they have out there that would make people curious and viewers want to stick around. I'm just not that curious about it because at the end of the day, from what they showed me in the first two episodes, I don't know if they'll be able to execute a a well-deserved conclusion or a well-deserved answer to that question. Like my faith is is low <laughs> on these writers from what they've showcased so far. And that like your first two episodes, you purposely drop them together mm-hmm. and you purposely it's kind of and now you're doing a week to week drop. So there's no binging. So yeah. you have to have a well-crafted episodes so that viewers can suddenly not only know the characters, learn about the world, start the story, but also just develop some trust that the mm-hmm. writers know what they're doing which I don't really know if they do. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, those are all, those are all fair points. I mean, those are some of the clear, some of the warts that are, that are on this show uh, as far as just, like you said, as, as, as we, as we said earlier, I mean, I think whenever you pointed out the, the biggie and that one of the biggie quibbles I had with it too, was just how they, they wrote Saul one minute, believe in one thing and then two minutes later <laughs> saying something completely it's like oh yeah believe me now so <laughs> yeah, yeah and i feel yeah. like he did that again in the second episode but yeah. to a lesser extent it just i don't know there's something about him where if you told me during the fire he got like he hit his head and so he honestly doesn't remember. And so he'll just believe whatever OSHA tells him. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good to me. That that make that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 What were some of the th- okay, so I know I know we have spent a lot of time on um you know, I think we both agree that the, the writing is uh does definitely has its problems to say the least uh even to the point where we get it's, it's like throwing us cross wires in our in our analysis here a couple times but um what were some things you did like about it i mean as far as you know i know there was no sand i know that's a plus <laughs> yeah yeah there was no yeah. sand yeah i watched it um yeah i mean it was it was fine <laughs> <laughs> Just the fact yeah. it's practical, nothing, you know, honestly, being all set. Yeah, I mean, nothing, like, stood out for you. Nothing you know. will stand out for me as, like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. Or that was a really interesting moment. Or because everything else was just like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, no, no. I, I, And it's not like I, it's, I'm not saying I hated every single minute of it. I'm just saying nothing like stood out to me yeah yeah that's yeah i mean that's fair i mean it's 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 an average it was an average start and uh yeah you would probably say below average start well i was gonna say like c minus b plus you know like somewhere around there yeah that's that's where i that's where i fell on it to be honest it was a c plus yeah yeah Yeah. well i said c minus yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah like okay. I said, anything it, anything else you want to talk about back like because no I, no i'm no, kind of out of it <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know no i think we i think we have covered it pretty well tonight so um we'll see we'll see if it uh gains any points next week with episode three with a wookie jedi which is pretty exciting uh but uh yeah, I think we can we can put a bow on the first two episodes. Yep. All right. On that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But more, most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>